booktube this is my fifth and final video on the book selections for Canada Reads 2015. Um, if you don't know Canada Reads is a competition set up by CBC where they take five well-known Canadians and ask them to defend five Canadian books um, and each week each day sorry a book is voted off and the winning book is a book that they think every Canadian should read. This year we have a theme and that theme is a book to break barriers. I'm just going to get my review up here. And this is the book that I think I would be happiest if it won Canada Reads. Um, this is And the Birds Rain Down by Jocelyn Saussier, translated by Rhonda Mullins. Uh, it is a beautiful book. Um, it is definitely a testament to the translator as well as to the author to be able to keep the language and structure um, as beautiful as the story. So I am including definitely Rhonda Mullen's name on there. Um, beautiful. Okay, so a basic summary. Um, there's multiple storylines that intertwine and they're all kind of interconnected but they're not forcibly interconnected. They're kind of organically come together. Um, you have two old men, well over 80, who decide to leave society behind, go off the grid, and live in the forests of northern Ontario. Um, and they are supported by their pensions, and actually two young men who convince them to start a marijuana plantation. Um, then they are visited by two women who are kind of coming in and, you know, upset their lives a little. Um, they're first visited by a photographer who's obsessed with the survivors of the Great Fires, which is a real historical event that killed more than 300 people um, in northern Ontario. Um, and a woman who had spent the last 66 years of her life locked up in a mental institution. Um, so each person has their own story that doesn't kind of interfere with the lives of the others um, and doesn't really contrast them but rather complements them. Um, uh, for example, the photographer is trying to uncover the life of a legendary figure of the fires and although he's dead, she discovers his legacy and um, an unlikely but very beautiful relationship amongst all these older people. Um, I find that it's, it's presented like almost like a documentary um, with a voiceover. Um, I'll show you here. Um, we have the plain text here and then the kind of italicized sections here where this is kind of like the voiceover where she's setting the scene or explaining things in kind of an omniscient sense as opposed to these character driven narratives in the plain text. Um, is this a book to break barriers? I think so. Um, the number of topics covered and how they are covered are really thought-provoking and definitely I think they break barriers. Um, for example, they talk a lot about old age, um, about how your body versus your mind versus your expectations of what your body and your mind can do. So your body may be um, crippled but your mind is still there. Your mind's gone but your body's fine. Or um, you know, what you expect when you get old to happen and what does and doesn't happen. Um, and I think Martha Wainwright put it very <laughs> funnily when she said there's some geriatric sexual mishaps that happen in the book. Um, but it's not, it's not funny, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, uh, there's also um, the issue that is very big in Canada right now about controlling how you die. Uh, the Supreme Court just stated that doctor-assisted suicides um, is not illegal and has given Canada a year to come up with laws to put in place um, to make assisted suicide legal. Um, and that's an, an issue that they address in this book about not being afraid of death um, and even maybe changing your mind if you decide that you want to control that. Um, if you want to you know, to, to end your life and then changing your mind because it's not something that you're totally set on, that these things kind of change throughout life. Um, it also talks a lot about marijuana usage in kind of a very neutral type way. Um, and there's a lot about history here. I um, mean, you know, I never heard of the um, Great Fires of 1916. Um, and I'm surprised I can tell you anything about World War I, but ask me about the Great Fires, and if it wasn't for this book, I wouldn't have known. Um, but I can tell you certainly that I think it is a very important part of Canadian history and that it should be taught in schools. Um, 
as well mental health issues are addressed in this book um it really exposes canada's history of locking up unwanted people um and mistreating them both socially medically sexually all these all these ways you know people with mental health issues or people who are just peculiar were, were being locked up and and it the one of the one of the characters has mental health issues obviously the, the person who escaped from the mental institution and um the way that they they address it is just like she's one of the other characters it's nothing um you know that's kind of pointed out all the time like look at this look at this look at this like at this which is what a, i found with a few of the other books um that were addressing with these issues it was just kind of like there's these blinking lights going off no this is kind of organically pit in it's a part of the story it's very beautifully done um so i think this book is beautiful it addresses so many issues um and martha wainwright is awesome so this book is going to win canada reads i really really hope it does anyways uh, so let me know if you've read this. Um, I can't remember the French because my French is really bad. Oh, here. If you read this in French, it would be called Il Pleuve de Osu. Really bad. Um, but in, in English, it's And the Birds Rain Down. Uh, so, yes, let me know what you thought about it and what book you think should read Canada Reads. And remember to keep on reading. Hey. You might want to check out Pickle's Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and other social media links in the description bar underneath.